So not too long ago, I put out a video titled my top five home defense handguns. Um, and what that video was, was me basically trying to figure out out of the top five guns that I had, which one I wanted to make my new home defense handgun for my nightstand. Uh, prior to that, the gun I had was my HK45 Tactical. I love that gun. It's an exceptional gun. However, there are some limitations about that gun that as I've started to think through the process of what would be the best home defense handgun for me, um, I started to realize that it doesn't have those things. And so I wanted to switch over, namely a lot of that being one capacity, the type of caliber, so forth and so on. Um, I did do a video on that particular gun that's on my channel as well, if you wanna go and watch that. So for somebody who's looking for a home defense handgun in 45, I think the HK 45 Tactical is a great gun in that regard. Now, of the guns that I decided at the time, I actually had six guns I was considering. The reason why I said five is because one of those guns was under embargo and I couldn't talk about it. And that gun would be the Springfield Prodigy Double Stack 1911. Um, at this point now, kind of thinking things through, I've narrowed it down to two guns, either the 509 Tactical from FN or this the Springfield Prodigy Double Stack 1911. Um, now I can talk about it because it's no longer under embargo. And I had that gun for a while actually before I actually put the video out and that embargo was lifted. So both of these guns more or less have all of the five things that I think are incredibly important for every home defense handgun to have. So what I'm gonna do now is talk about my top five things that every home defense handgun should have on their gun. It's gonna be subjective, but I do think a lot of this stuff is actually pretty objective. So I'm gonna start with the first one a light. In the past, I've heard stories of situations where someone is at home at night and they hear what they think is somebody breaking into their home, they grab their gun and then they walk out and they shoot into the darkness only to realize that the person they hit was one of their family members. The idea of me doing something like that is terrifying. I don't ever want to be in that situation, especially when it's such an easy situation to mitigate or prevent. And you can prevent it simply by having a light on your gun so that you can turn that light on and identify and know exactly what you're shooting at when you do it. There are some back and forth about whether or not it makes more sense to have a light on the gun itself or have a handheld light. Personally, I like having the light on the gun, but I can I do see some of the potential issues that people may have with respect to having the light on the gun. One of those things is, if you have a light on the gun, whatever you point that light at, the gun is also pointed at. Me personally, that doesn't bother me because if I have my gun in my hand, potentially having to deal with a criminal or threat, I want the gun pointed at them. Um, and I also like the idea of having this hand free. So me personally, I don't, I don't want to run with a secondary light in my hand and then have a gun in my other. However, having a light is better than no light. So whether or not you have a, a light in your hand or you have a light on the gun, just make sure you have a light for your home defense setup. Um, make sure you buy a gun that can actually accommodate the type of light you want on your home defense gun. The second thing that I think every home defense handgun should have, and I know this is gonna ruffle some feathers, but it's gonna have to be a red dot. Now, I grew up learning how to shoot a firearm using iron sights. That, that I'm very comfortable with iron sights. However, over time, I've gone to different courses and I've trained and I've shot extensively with a red dot. And at this point, now that I understand how to use it mechanically, it is faster and it is easier. And one of the other benefits of running a red dot is that you can literally tailor make that red dot to your house situation. So if you have a hallway that's 20 feet, yard, 20 feet, 20 feet long, 10 feet long, whatever the case may be, I can take that red dot and zero it to exactly the distance that I might have to shoot in a home defense situation. Can't necessarily do that with iron sights, but you can with the red dot. Now I know some of the limitations that come with the red dot are the battery could die when you least expect it and you need it to shoot and now you don't have a, a red dot. That brings me to my third thing that I think every home defense handgun should have, which is press high iron sights. So. The reason why I say suppressor height iron sights is because you want to have the iron sights clearing the actual red dot. And as a result of that, if you do happen to go to your gun and your, and your red dot is dead, well, now you have the backup iron sights that you can use. And because they're night sights, you'll be able to see and use them at night. Um, now, ironically enough, the suppressor height aspect of it brings me to the fourth thing that I think every gun should have uh, as far as it being a home defense handgun. And that's going to be the ability to put a suppressor on it. Now, I did a 
a podcast where I talk, I spoke with someone about the fact that, you know, they don't like running a suppressor on their gun for home defense. And I do. I do think it's kind of a personal thing, but I have tinnitus. My ears ring whenever it's super quiet. So I'm really big on protecting my hearing as much as possible. I don't want to make it worse. Um, so I've always loved the idea of running suppressors on my home defense handguns as well as the rifles because I do also keep a rifle next to my bed as well. So for people who are concerned about the potential loss of hearing or hearing damage as a result of having to use your gun in a self-defense situation, um, I think it's ideal to have a gun that either already has a threaded barrel that you can put a suppressor on or have a gun where you can actually get a barrel and swap it and have a threaded barrel that you could put a suppressor on. The uh, Springfield Prodigy currently, as I'm aware of, doesn't have a threaded barrel, but I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't one that came down later on down the line. Um, so which is why that didn't exclude this gun from the list and why I'm considering it now in my top two. And so at the end of the day, I, look, I get it. Some people are like, oh, it's much to do about nothing with respect to suppressors. I think it's important. Um, I, I think it, it couldn't hurt. I don't think you lose anything by having a suppressor on your gun. So that's why for me, that's gonna be one of the top five things I think every home, every home defense handgun should have. The next thing is gonna be an extended magazine or at least 18 rounds in the gun ready to go. Not like, oh, you have like 15 rounds and then you have a spare mag next to it. I think it should have at least 18 rounds in the gun, me personally, because we're not limited to the same things we would be with a concealed carry handgun. With concealed carry handguns, you know, you have size issues, how you dress and things like that will, that will dictate how big the gun can be. And the size of the gun largely dictates how many rounds you can have in the gun. But in a home defense situation, you can generally have a gun as big as you want it to be. And thus, you have more rounds. And so since you're in your home, I'd say take advantage of the ability to have more rounds in your gun than not. Because there are a lot of situations where a lot of these home invasions, they're not just one person, they're multiple people. So you don't know what you're gonna have to deal with. And you don't wanna also have to deal with the fact that, okay, I have a limited round capacity in one gun, but then have a spare mag next to it, that's fine. But in the heat of the moment, I can easily see myself grabbing a gun and even forgetting to grab the spare mag if I needed to. So I just wanna have it there ready to go. I don't wanna have to think about it. It's right there and that's pretty much it. Um, um, I know some people are gonna be like, oh, well, how many rounds do you think you're gonna fire in a situation? I think you're overthinking it. Do you think you live in Afghanistan, so forth and so on? I get it, but why limit myself unnecessarily? It just doesn't make sense. So if I can have the rounds, why not have the rounds? And that's what I do. So I definitely try to make it so that whatever gun I actually end up using for my home defense setup, it has at least 18 rounds and up. So. That's pretty much it. It's, it's not honestly that complicated. And these things are actually relatively easy, but I think it's easy to forget some of these things sometimes when we're choosing what home defense handgun we wanna use. So of those five things, I think the most important is probably gonna be the light. And then second, probably be the capacity. And then of course you have the iron sights and then the red dot, um, so forth and so on. Um, and then the ability to suppress it. So that's my personal opinion as far as what I think every home defense handgun should have. Um, if you think differently or you think I forgot something, leave a comment and let me know what you think. What are your top five things that you think every home defense handgun should have? The gun is just a starting point when it comes to self-defense. But what's equally important is training to use that gun, understanding the laws in your state regarding self-defense, and being prepared for any legal issues that may come up if you have to go to court and defend your decision to defend yourself. That's why I'm a USCCA member. Being a USCCA member is an easy way to do all of those things. If you have to use your gun in self-defense, you could find yourself in a very expensive legal case to prove that it was justified. The beautiful thing about a USCCA membership is that you don't just get self-defense insurance, you also get access to their treasure trove of education and their training program. So if you're interested in learning more about USCCA, there's a link in the description section of this video. You know how frightening it is to think about what happens in the moments before, during, and even days after having to use your gun in self-defense? When you first start carrying a gun for protection, it can be a very scary and nerve wracking experience, especially if you haven't gotten the education and training you need to feel confident. I've been there myself hoping I never have to go through a self-defense shooting, which is why I'm a member of the USCCA.
As a USCCA member, you can eliminate some of the stress of carrying a gun for protection by accessing the amazing wealth of firearm education, training, and current state-specific gun laws of your state or states you may travel to. This can help you be prepared for or hopefully even avoid a self-defense incident. As a bonus, members automatically become insured on the self-defense liability insurance policy purchased by an issue to the USCCA. Click below to learn more. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is gonna do a phenomenal job of suppressing this message. So please share this video with as many people as you can so we can beat the algorithm and get our two-way message out to the masses. Also, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment and hit the bell and subscribe button.